Alright, welcome to Undead Guide in Divinity Original Sin 2. I've seen many questions about Undead and how to play them and how to create a good party around them, so I will now cover only Undead. I've already talked about Undead in the previous video, but I have more knowledge now and I'm ready to share everything and now you will have a perfect party for your Undead character. Before we start, we will stroll through these options here where you have undead dwarf undead elf human and lizard up to you what you want to be the only thing that changes is the second talent sophisticated ingenious corpse eater and sturdy depending on what you want to play if you want to create a custom one i will use fane as a preset here corpse eater might be really good for undead because you are lacking in healing you can only heal through poison and corpse eater will give you additional possibility to heal yourself with body parts that you will find throughout the adventure and you will find a lot of body parts now let's go cover Thane all right I will now go through each and every class first let's go to the fighter class fighter class is probably the best one for the undead you already have geomancer tree which is extremely important and warfare is extremely important for fighter or knight or any other melee strength class geomancer ability is extremely important because of the contamination and for poison dart skill if you don't want geomancer on your main character then you need to have one in your party but i will cover party composition later on let's cover fane and all the possibilities for him Fossil Strike is useless because it creates oil surface and oil surface can be ignited and fire is very bad for undead. Contamination, Poison Dart are the ones that you want with Fortify as well. You can choose one at the beginning and later on you will find skill books that will give you the rest. These are basic skills, you will find them on any kind of vendor that you can find throughout the game. From warfare abilities, choose for yourself what you like. Contamination turns water, blood surfaces and clouds into poison. That's fantastic when you're up in someone's face in melee range and they are human or any other creature except the undead. And then you can create that puddle around you because they will bleed. Your enemy will bleed when you hit them and then they will also stand in that poison that you've created with contamination and that poison will heal you while damaging them. Same goes with poison dart. If you cast it from a short range and in this case you will be casting it because you're a melee character, you will create a puddle of poison. Puddle of poison as with contamination will heal you and damage them. So that covers the fighter. Now let's go for other presets. Inquisitor is bad because you cannot heal from these skills. Mosquito Swarm and Bloodsucker. So forget about Inquisitor. I've tried healing myself with Bloodsucker, did not work. But strangely enough, if you put in your talents Leech, you can walk through the blood and you will heal, which is also one of the good talents to have for undead characters. I would definitely suggest Leech. So forget about the Inquisitor. Knight. If you want to build Knight, you don't have to go for a preset with Geomancy. You can have your knight here with Warfare and two-handed as it is, but you're going to need Geomancer in your party to heal you. So he's a viable class for Undead, because I am currently playing knight. My main one is Undead Knight. Metamorph is a crowd control class, so it's perfectly viable to go for it. Undead Ranger can be built in many ways. If you do not have any undead characters in your party besides your undead ranger, then you can go for the default setup with pyrokinetic abilities. That way you can cast fire spells from afar and you will not be affected by burning status. That is if you do not have any undead characters like melee ones. You can have two undead safe distance characters that can cast spells or use bow or crossbow that way you are okay regarding pyrokinetic abilities but if you have a melee character that is undead in your party then this goes off the table the other options are really whatever you want you can go instead of pyrokinetic geomancer 
if you have this one then it doesn't matter if you have undead melee character if you have undead melee character then undead ranger will actually benefit you with geomancer skill because you can cast contamination and poison dart from afar one good combination would be if you have undead ranger and add with geomancy and undead knight knight by default does not have geomancer skill so when he is up close striking enemies you can go from afar and strike that same enemy with poison dart or contaminate the area around him that way you will create poison puddles beneath your guy and beneath the enemy and that way you, your guy can heal so that's a fantastic thing undead ranger with geomancy and knight let's go check out someone else Rogues and Shadow Blades are fantastic for Undead. Undead can lockpick with their bony fingers, so you don't need lockpicks at all to unlock locked containers, doors, or whatnot. You just need Tivari skill. So if I would build one, I would definitely choose immediately Tivari skill, then later on do sneaking. As from the other stuff, go for Scoundrel, dual wielding typical stuff that goes with the preset. Everything else is really self-explanatory here. It's a fantastic class for him. Even the Shadow Blade. Have Tivari on him and you're good to go. Wayfarer is a class that is by default good, but you need to remove Fossil Strike. Or actually you can have Fossil Strike in it as well, as long as you don't have Undead Melee character. Same principle goes for Wayfarer as with Ranger. Which can be a good class for an undead. The only thing that you need to do is remove Mosquito Swarm and go for Decaying Touch. Or you can go for Blood Sucker as well. Uh, you can then use that skill to heal others, not yourself. So there are options here. Also you can go with Witch for the talent that I told you about, Leech. That way when you're standing in blood, you can heal others and you're healing yourself as well. Wizard can only be played if you do not have any undead melee characters in your party. Same principle almost as with Ranger and Wayfarer. Battle Mage can be easily played with undead. Nothing here that needs to be said. Everything is perfect for Battle Mage setup. No consequences whatsoever cleric cleric well you could create a cleric i don't see why not you will have decaying touch you will have blood sucker and you will have restoration you will be able to heal others but you will not be able to heal yourself with it so it's a completely viable option especially because of this skill rain so what i would do as a preset if you're creating a cleric class is leave decaying touch or blood sucker Actually, I would remove the King Touch and go for Rain. When Undead are on fire and when there's a lot of fire surface around you, Rain will fix that issue. That's why I think Rain is one of the best abilities in the game for Undead. Later on, also get Armor of Frost skill book that will help a lot in restoring your magic armor. Conjurer is summoner. I really don't know anything about summoning, but I don't see why it could not work. So please give me some update in comments to help others. So I will completely skip this class. Enchanter is definitely a good choice for undead. You have water and air, which is fantastic when combined. You can cast rain, then you can stun everything with shocking touch and electric discharge. If they have their magic armor down Rest you can also add restoration to help others and heal others later on in the game why not don't forget that restoration skills damage other undead so you can use that as an offense spell now that i've covered all the presets i will talk about a party how it should be composed of as i said you need Geomancer in your party. Will it be your main character or will it be someone else in the party? Does not matter. You need someone that can do a lot of poison attacks. If you want to create a perfect healer in your party that would heal your undead and that would heal others, simply go for something like Cleric and 
or actually Enchanter, even better. He's got the best basic setup. Hydra Sophist and Geomancer. That way you will be able to heal others and heal your undead with contamination and poison darts. Later on you will be able to restore magic armor and have rain skill with the skill book, depending on how would you build your starter class. With Fortify and Armor of Frost you can constantly recharge physical armor and magic armor, which makes this probably the best support setup for any kind of group, especially for the undead ones. Just note one thing, if you have poison on your undead character and you cast Fortify on him, it will remove poison. So be wary about that. It will remove poison damage over time, so he will not heal anymore. It, that damage over time effect will be removed by Fortify. Last thing that I wanted to cover are poison flasks. When you press G on your keyboard, you will go into crafting uh, screen. Here are some of the recipes that you need. You can create poisoned food and poisoned drinks. That will heal something and maybe give you some other benefits. This is something you can find in Fort Joy Prison, if I'm not mistaken. I cannot remember for the life of me where you can find Zyke Stellon, but I think it's Fort Joy Prison. And your main healing source will be poison bottles. You can actually take ooze barrel and create small poison bottle with empty potion bottle and ooze barrel. So definitely if you're playing with an undead character in your party, take ooze barrel whenever you can. Definitely, if you have undead character in your party, pick up any ooze barrel that you find. One should be actually enough. I don't know how many uses does one ooze barrel have, but so far I've created a lot of poison bottles and I did not drain that one ooze barrel. It does weigh a lot, but what can you do? And also you can create small poison bottle from empty, option bo empty potion bottle and fly agaric mushroom. To create medium poison bottle you combine two small poison bottles. To create large poison bottle you combine two medium poison bottles. Some other things that can help you out are poison grenades and arrows. You can find all the recipes for grenades, arrows and everything that you need to know from my other video called important recipes so that I don't cover that here in this video because I don't even have ones right now but to create a poisoned arrow you just need poisoned arrowhead and arrow shaft thank you all for watching I hope I helped you out undead are really cool and this is probably the best game that I've ever played I mean I'm enjoying so much it's unfreaking believable Actually, I'm pissed off that I have to work and do guides. I just want to enjoy the game. But if I can help you out with anything, do post in comments. I will always respond. Thank you all for watching and see you soon.